Hi everyone, today I'm going to take a closer look at this Montag Air 903 Max chassis. Before showing you the details, I'd like to thank Montag to have provided this case for me to share with you guys. Let's begin with the exterior. Starting on this end, you'll be ushered with a full tempered glass panel. At the front, a very tall and wide mesh cover. Not only this, the front bezel at each end, at the side, there are cutouts with mesh. With the combination of the side and front itself, it will draw tons of air through your front fans into your case. Over at this end, you'll be ushered with a full metal panel whereby it covers up all the cable management area, which I'm going to show you later. At the rear, you'll be ushered with a motherboard cutout over here and with a total of 7 PCI expansion slots. At the bottom, the cutout for your PSU, more ventilation holes over here. And at this section over here, this is where you place your exhaust fan. You can place either a 120mm fan or a 140mm fan. There will be plenty of air exhausting out. Now, as for the measurement of this case itself, measuring from the end of the thumb screws to the front bezel is at 478mm. If you were to exclude the thumb screw, meaning you say the end of the temper glass over here to the front is 465 millimeter. Measuring from the top to the bottom of the feet is at 493 millimeter. And the gap between the bottom to the end of the feet here is 23 millimeter in height. And as for the width from here to here, is 230 millimeter. To remove all the panels starting from the front where you take out this mesh over here, place your finger at the bottom. There is a lever over here. Pull towards you and release. See this lever over here? So this is where you place your finger and to pull it to, towards you. Now at the top, there's a guiding hinge. If you want to place it back, there's this hole over here at the front. Match it with the hole with the guiding hinge then push it back and this will be in place. Now when you remove off the uh, front bezel or should I say the mesh itself, you'll be ushered with three 140mm fans which are ARGB and it's PWM. This is provided in this case. Now for the temper glass itself, when you want to remove, there are two thumb screws over here. Just unscrew them. It's captive by the way, you don't have to unscrew all the way. Now, when you want to take this tempered glass, please take extra care. I will show you why. What I'll do is, right, there's this catch over here for you to pull and to slide out. Make sure you support the tempered glass with your the other hand at the bottom. Glide it out. Then, take it off. Reason for this, right, now, as there are nothing here to catch to the case itself, so, if you are to remove it without supporting it, okay, this is in. Now, if you do it without supporting the temper glass itself, right, using one hand, right, see what happens. See, it will drop. This might break your temper glass. So, make sure to do it with two hands and not one hand. So, illustrate again. Even if you want to slide it back, right, make sure you support the bottom of the temper glass. Because this is where it contacts the ground. And if this is a concrete ground or a town ground, right, you're definitely going to break your tempered glass if this is to fall from the case itself. So again, when you remove, please make sure you support the bottom where the, the tempered glass is, then you glide it out. Same goes to when you want to place it back. Before you glide it back, support it and to glide it back and to fasten in place. Now next will be the other side. For this whole panel, right, again, same thing, two thumb screws, remove them. These are captive, you don't have to unscrew them totally. So once done, right, again, support it, grind it out. See, I didn't support it properly. I support the top, this will just fall off. Also, though this is not tempered glass, but the bottom here, right, might dent if you don't support it and if it drops off from the case itself. So 
will show you a better illustration. So when you want to take it out, right, make sure you support the bottom, pull it, and take it off. And this will expose the cable management area. This is how the interior looks like. I'll start off with the motherboard placement. You'll be able to place a EATX motherboard, a ATX motherboard, a MATX motherboard, or even an ITX motherboard. There are plenty of cutouts interiorly. At the top, you have three. This is where you rub your fan cables, your ARGB cables, or even your CPU EPS cable from your PSU to here and to your motherboard. A very large motherboard cutout. Next at the bottom, there are three cutouts over here, whereby you pass through your USB cable, front I.O. cables, to connect to your motherboard, or the audio cable to be connected to your motherboard. And over here, a special cutout for your GPU cables, whereby you route through either the uh, PCIe cables or the 12 volt high power cables through here, and to be connected to your GPU. Now this case include four fans, three which are ARGB, one which is not ARGB. And all these fans are 140 millimeter fans. And they are all PWM function. As for the arrangement of the fans, starting from the top, you'll be able to mount three 120 mm fans or two 140 mm fans. For the front, you'll be able to mount three 120 mm fans or three 140 mm fans. As you can see, it's already configured with three 140 mm fans. At the bottom over here, if you want to draw more air to your GPU itself, you'll be able to mount two 120 mm fans. And as for the rear, as I mentioned to you, you can mount either 120 or a 140mm fan. For radiators and liquid AIO placement, be it the top or the front, they both share the same configuration. You can place 120, 240, 280, or even a 360. As for air cooler, make sure that your height of the air cooler is not more than 190. As for GPU placement, this is a 4070 Ti, be whether you're mounting vertically or horizontally. Now, this card has a length of 332mm in length. And this case measuring from here to here is 400. I would advise be whether you mount horizontally or vertically, make sure your card does not exceed 370 millimeter in length. This only happen if you were to place fans in front. As you can see here, I deliberately placed the card to show you if the front you're placing a liquid AIO. Now, if your fans are over at this side together with your radiator, take note the thickness of this radiator is 27 millimeter and the fan is 25. So total is 52 millimeter. And if you place the fan this way, right, take a look at the gap of the GPU itself. It's almost touching. And this GPU itself is 332. And if at 340, right, it's definitely going to hit this. Another way around you can do is place the fan instead of this way, place the radiator here and the fans at the other end, which is here. So you give more space. But having to say so right, giving more space, please do not exceed the length of 350. The length of 350 is only when you place the radiator over here and the fence is the other side, right? It doesn't mean that 350, you can place the radiator and the fan together. Because at the 340 mark, it will definitely hit. So take note on this. Another question which I anticipated, what if I decided to put an Arctic Liquid Freezer 2? Liquid AIO. Arctic is well known for its thickness of the radiator itself. This is 38 millimeter. If you only place the radiator with the uh, graphic card at 350 millimeter, as mentioned, you are good to go. See, you have space, not a problem. But if you're having a 350 length of GPU and you want to place the fan inside, no way. See, my graphic card is 
thirty two. In fact, it's not three fifty, and it's hitting the fan. Or should I say, the fan is already hitting my graphic card when I sort this in. Unless you place the fan on the other side with just the radiator, no problem. Three fifty is just nice. By the way, some of you might be curious, what kind of GPU vertical mount am I using? Well, Montec has its own vertical mount known as the VGM, Vertical GPU Mounting Kit, which I've obtained from Montec. I will be doing a separate video talking about this vertical GPU bracket. This is another area where I would like to highlight. This is the top of the case where you have the uh, 360 liquid AIO mount or 120 or 240. And at further end, right, this is the 280, which is here and here. These are the source for you to mount your radiator. It's in the 280. Now, if you are to place, okay, this is my motherboard where you have the side VRM and the height is at 35 millimeter and this is the rear of the IO now if you are to place a 120 240 or a 360 liquid AIO not an issue as mentioned to you right the slots to mount the uh, radiator is over here and here so if I were to put this here right it will align properly not a problem because it's narrow and it doesn't hit your PRM but if you are to place a 280 radiator, okay, for 360, right, you can even place a Arctic Liquid Freezer 360, 240, or even 120, not an issue. It will not hit the VRM. The only problem you have is if you intend to place a Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 280, now that's going to be having a problem. You might say, oh, cool, I can sort this in. Yes, true enough, I can sort this in. But the thing is, it doesn't flush the top hole. In fact, it's, my holes are located over, right above the uh, buildings over here. So when I push it down, right, my fans are hitting the uh, VRM. Okay, this is the 280 liquid AIO housing as in like to place your screws to hold the radiator it flushes to this and the height from here to here right is 55 millimeter so having to say so right the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 is exceeding this 55 which goes beyond which is at 63 so it will definitely hit the VRM and mind you this VRM here right the height okay I'm talking about the height is 35 millimeter. Some other boss is even taller, like ASUTEC or Gigabyte, is up to 45 millimeter at height. Definitely, you can't fit a Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 to 80. But for the rest of the liquid AIO that is 280, if the radiator is at a height of 27 to 28 millimeter plus the fan total up is either 52 or 53 millimeter which I mentioned to you at the top this gap over here is at 55 so if your radiator plus fan of a thickness of 52 or 53 not an issue it will just align or even when you have 28 millimeter red and a 25 millimeter uh, fan itself right you will still not hit the VRM at all. This is the end where it shows you all the cable management. You have three Velcro stripes to hold on to all this cable so you can tuck your cables and to tie them up nicely. Now looking on the left itself, this rubber grommets over here and this rubber grommets over here, they are meant for you to place your 2.5 inch SSD which is this size. So looking at the screw thread over here, so you're supposed to place the screws at the other end see so your screw should be on the other end which is the front and to screw your SSD over here 
And when you're screwing the SSD here, right, make sure that the SATA uh, connection point and the power point itself right, is facing this way and not this way. If you're going to face this way, right, you're going to have problem routing your cable. Besides this, there are two more caddies over here, which are also meant for SSD. So we have a total of one, two, three, four. And there's one more at the bottom, which I'm going to show you later. Now for these two caddies right, to remove, all is needed is just remove these two thumb screws. But when you remove the thumb screws, right, do not just remove the thumb screw and don't hold the caddy. Reason being, right, if you do unscrew, take a look. See, it just fall off. So take note on this. Now for this caddy itself, right, what you need to do is to place your SSD. Then at the other end, this is where you place your screws in. To hold the SSD and again the input area and the power source make sure it's facing downwards now besides this right there is this controller over here in fact this is a ARGB and a fan hub and this is rather interesting because it does have a switch as you can see here later I'll show you at the top where it says LED is this switch over here and other than that right the uh, cable tie points, you have a total of four, two at the top, which is one hidden over here, and then two at the bottom. It close out on the ARGB and the fan hub. Now, this is not only a hub, but it is a controller that controls the ARGB effects. As there's a switch, as you can see here, LED switch, there's a switch at the top where you toggle it, right? You will cycle the ARGB effects. So whatever ARGB connector you're connected to this six, connection point it will follow according to what you have set on the switch itself on the case now at the bottom these are six pwm four pin fan headers whereby you will need to connect this cable at the end this is to connect to your motherboard fan header and you will only pick up one instruction whatever fan header you have connected to it right and whatever curve you have set for example let's say to run at 6000 rpm consistently whatever fans you have connected in this six plugs over here it will be at 600 you can't say that you want this to be running at 200 next will be running at maybe 300 or 400 rpms you can't do that all this six will only take one instruction from your motherboard fan header now speaking of which right over at this side you will see two connection point here and with cables at the bottom section this is a very important cable where you will need to connect the SATA supply source to your PSU where it draws the power from your PSU SATA source to the controller and to provide power to all your ARGBs and all your fans at the top over here now as mentioned to you, right, all this ARGB is controlled by this switch here at the top. If you choose not to run the controller itself, you can bypass it. But make sure you connect this 3-pin 5-volt ARGB connector to your motherboard. And to make use of your motherboard ARGB connect, I mean, utility to control the ARGB effects. But of course, if you choose to use this controller to control the ARGB effect, you do not need to plug this 3-pin 5-volt ARGB connector. This is the top section of the case whereby you have this mesh filter to filter off the dust but most of the time we do not use this. This is magnetic so when you remove this mesh right this is how it looks like. Now over here these are all the IOs, the power switch, two USB 3 socket, one Type-C socket which is version 3.1 followed by a microphone jet a headphone jet and a reset switch and earlier on I was telling you about the ARGB effect switch which is the LED switch this is the one once you toggle this right it will cycle the ARGB effects of what you have plugged on the ARGB and fan hub this is the bottom section of the case itself on my left this is a hard disk cage and on my right this is the PSU area I'll start off with the PSU area whereby I've done a measurement from here all the way to the screw is located is where I measured 200 millimeter 
so meaning to say here so from the inside the end of the PSU all the way to here is 200 millimeter you can place this length reason being there are plenty of space over here so you can plug your 24 pin cable your EPS cable, your PCIe cable, or even the 12 volt high power cables to your PSU without any obstacle. Even if you do move, okay, this cage is removable and you can relocate as you can see over here. This is at one point, this is at another point. Even if you do shift this in towards the uh, PSU itself, right? See, you still have enough clearance. Now, before I move on to the hard disk cage itself, just want to show you that beneath this PSU, there is a mesh filter. And to remove this mesh filter, all that's needed is to place your two finger at the bottom and to pull. See? Look at the fingers where I'm located. This cutout is meant for you to tuck your fingers in, to push it down, and to pull. So this is will filter off all the dust from going to your PSU and when it's dirty right you can just wash it make sure it's clean and to sort it back in now coming to the hard disk cage area as you can see over here right you are able to place two 3.5 inch hard disks which is one over here second one at the top now if you want to place anything at the top right you will need to remove off this hard disk cage and besides mounting the two 3.5 inch hard disk right you can also without the 3.5 inch you can also mount one 2.5 inch at the top i'll show you how it's been done now as mentioned if you want to mount any hard disk at the top you will need to take out this cage and to take out this cage flip at the bottom there are two thumb screws over here and you will need to remove them once you've done this right now pull the hard disk towards you okay showing you at the bottom when you pull right see you will just go up so remove them off from the hose it'll be easier if you to remove the thumb screw and to remove it this way because you can eyeball the hose and to take it out and this is the hard disk and in order for you as mentioned right you want to slot it inner just place at the inner slot and again eyeball the thing and push it down and this will secure in place Having to say this right, as I mentioned, how to mount the hard disk in this cage itself. For the 3.5 inch where you house inside here, you will need to screw the uh, screws to hold the hard disk at the side. And as for the top, it's slightly different. You will need to place your hard disk at the top and to turn over at the bottom where you have this screw holes over here this is where where you screw and to tighten or to fasten the hard disk at the top same goes to your ssd where you can see there are four holes over here place your 2.5 inch ssd okay then flip it over align to the holes over here okay, let me see okay see you align this and you place the screws over here once this is done right you'll be faster in place then you'll be able to put your hard disk cage back to the case or in the event since this uh, case itself right as earlier on i show you the four points where you can place the ssd 2.5 inch ssd and you do not require this hard disk cage at all be it whether you're not using a 3.5 inch hard disk or a 2.5 inch hard disk just remove this cage and you'll give more clearance as in like more airflow from the front to your PSU 
and some of the air will just go through the vent at the bottom and into your case. These are all the accessories that come in this box. And first of all, you'll be ushered with an instruction manual. And one thing I gotta say to Montag, kudos to you guys. You have deliberately separate all the screws into individual package. And not only that, you have labeled them properly. See, this is meant for your 3.5 inch hard disk with six HDD and total of eight screws. Followed by this special SSD screw, which you will be mounting on your case itself where there are rubber grommets. These are meant for SSDs. Then followed by the PSU screws and the miscellaneous PCIe screws, which you can use on your PCIe brackets. In fact, the PCIe brackets are all thumb screws, so you these are just spares. Three motherboard standoff, additional. Then you have this bag of screw where it says motherboard and SSD. Total, there are 27 pieces. And for this, right, this is a special tool. Okay, I'm not going to unpack this. This is a special tool whereby you plug your standoff. As your standoffs are hexagonal shape, so this tool will go to the hexagonal shape. And at the, at the other end is a full Philip head where you place your screwdriver and to screw your standoffs. And you'll be ushered with total of six zip ties. Now, something which I like to mention, why is this case called Air 903 Max? There's a reason behind. Now, this is the front fan which I've taken off. There are a total of three at the front. And as you can see, there's a ring around the blade. Okay, maybe I'll show you over here. See? This will give you optimized airflow as in like to scoop all the air without compromises all will go through the blades here and to push into your case so this is also part of reason why is it called air 903 max in fact for 140 mm fans right it will pull tons of air at the front same apply to your back though the uh, rear fan is not ARGB but it has the same function which draw tons of warm air out of the case. Just an illustration of the ARGB. As I mentioned to you, I can toggle the switch at the top, which right now I'm doing it. See, it cycles through the ARGB pattern. And of course, this is just simple function, but it does add some lighting effects on the case itself. The first impression when I did the unbox for this Montag Air 903 Max chassis out of the box, at first glance, it reminds me of a speaker based on the mesh front and the three fans. Though the uh, real speakers, right, the tweeter is not this big, but it still reminds me of that, where you have the tweeter, the mid-range, and the bass. Imagine that you have a pair of this PC case side by side. At the center, you have a very big monitor. To me, it looks like a mini theater studio. All right, jokes aside. Now, this is a very budget-friendly case whereby the cost factor of it in USD is lesser than $70. And in Singapore, it's less than $90. With this say right, at this price point, in fact, this chassis has all the bells and whistles. Why do I say this? First of all, the look of it, it doesn't look very shabby. In fact, it looks very sturdy and beastly look. And I like the feet at the bottom. There is cutting of the feet itself. Instead of giving you a plain, you know, just a round, I mean, bottom feet. So these are some of the things they have put into details. Besides this, the case structure is very sturdy. Points need to be strengthened. They have not chipped out on it. And the cutouts of all this, when I glide my fingers, right, I don't get cut. They are treated nicely. And another price point of this case itself, right, there is added, or should I say, it should cost more. Things like the ARGB and the fan hub that comes with a controller 
and a switch addition additional switch to toggle the uh, ARGB which I showed you earlier now some budget cases right they do have this controller but they have sacrificed the reset switch because the toggling or cycling of the ARGB right they may use of the reset switch else for Montec right they have not sacrificed any of the switches the power switch the reset switch and the LED switch so they have included this also the IO socket itself gorgeously they have provided two USB 3.0 connectors or should I say the socket a type C port where some of the budget cases right based on cutting costs they will just not place the type C port this is greatly appreciated for me from my perspective and also the uh, modularity of the case itself things like the hard disk caddy the SSD caddy and the bottom hard disk cage that can be removed so easily and best part this chassis allow you to mount a full length ATX power supply which is up to 200 millimeter in length where you have tons of I should say a big space for you to feeder your cables to be connected to your PSU so if you intend to place a 200 millimeter long PSU ray not an issue even if you to shift the hard disk cage near to the PSU now besides this right the fan are also well built as I noticed when I toggle the LED switch right something I felt underneath my hand area I can feel the air is pushing okay it's not like the budget cases where you have the case fans right it does you know pull air but you don't feel the pressure when you place at the top or even the rear over here but with this 400 I mean this 440 mm fans that is pulling the air right I can feel the pressure of the uh, air coming off from the case and on top of this The fans itself right, are also detailed as in they have provided this ring just to scoop and channel more air through through this blade. So this is one very amazing thing that I've never seen any budget case have actually done this before. And bonus to it, they are giving you three ARGB fans included. And at the rear, there isn't, but it doesn't matter based on the budget itself I think this is a very worth value case itself now there are some room improvement on this case itself before I talk about the improvement right one thing I like to highlight is the tempered glass itself this is a 4 millimeter thick tempered glass where some of the budget case that I feeder with right they come in 2.5 or 3 millimeter thick is very very thin this is a solid temper glass now for the room of improvement right I hope that Montec in future even if they were to produce such friendly I mean budget friendly case right they should have done some hinges sticking out here and to place some holes over here and to glide the uh, temper glass in place reason being right this will prevent those builders who are lazy just to handle by one hand see it drops and you will break so with those two hinge at the bottom right the user will not use one I mean there's no way that the user will use one hand to actually glide they will automatically have to use two hands to hold on it and to pull it up so this is one of the uh, improvement that I hope Montec will consider in their future cases besides this I'd like to talk about fan now the fans indeed is pulling a lot of air even at mid rpm but when it's at max rpm right you get to hear noise and it did rattle a bit as I noticed so maybe provide fans with rubber damping material that would be good so that will absorb the vibration that causes the noise now the noise itself right is mainly caused by the uh, vibration of the fan frame itself not really by the frame I mean by the fan blades based on the fact that when you pull air right you do hear a smoothing I should say a smooth 
uh, rumble, but not like high pitch. So it's still acceptable, acceptable for me, but still audio is up to individual's uh, preference. Now, this is the top section. I just want to illustrate that, yes, this case can cater to 80 liquid AIO. It's just that this liquid freezer too has a thick radiator whereby I can fit it in, not a problem. But the thing is to angle the uh, slot, I mean the slot point, right, to hold the screw threads on the radiator itself, right, it's not possible because when I glide in, right, it goes in like this. It can't go fully. Reason being, right, this is heating together with the fan, it's heating the side BRM. And nowadays, the motherboard uh, BRMs, right, are pretty thick. So, you might be considering, as in, like, I am able to fit this 280 liquid AIO at this position, but not at this position. So, you might want to shift the slot, I mean, this uh, screw slots out a bit as in like having it this way because I can feel it this in it's just that the screw track right which is here and your slot is over here so if you do shift it outright I'm able to screw this in without having this side here touching the side BRM and I believe that in future right not only on Arctic itself there will be other 280 liquid AIO that has thicker radiator um, thickness I hope you guys have enjoyed what I've shared with you regarding about this Montag Air 903 Max chassis. On my next video, I will be sharing with you another experience on this vertical GPU mounting bracket coming from Montag. Now, this is a separate piece where you can purchase separately. With this said, I'd like to thank Montag to have provided this case for me to share with you guys. And for those of you who are actually new to my channel, welcome to my channel. If you like my content, do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button. Till then, take care, goodbye, see ya.